Hey, what's up? I'm Nizio Cole, and it has been one year since the release of the third installment in the Watch Dogs series, Watch Dogs Legion, was released on October 29th, 2020. And I did a video for six months after the release of Watch Dogs Legion, and I'm also going to be doing one for one year. I just kind of want to do a recap of everything we've gotten, all of the updates, all of the DLC, so let's get into it. First thing I want to talk about is performance. Now, I did touch on this in my six month video but they have really really increased the performance on console on pc since that video was made and it's not even something that i really have to worry about i can have chrome and legion open at the same time and it's not even an issue which is really nice but it's still something that during my review i kind of wish that they had taken the time to just iron out all those performance and stability issues before they even release the game which would have made for a much better experience during launch. My rating's not gonna change, but I just I just wish, you know, hope for Watch Dogs 4 that that's something that they sort out before they even release the game. The next thing I wanna briefly touch on is post-launch content, as in all the DLC that was released. Now, I did release a video earlier this week comparing the DLC, talking about if the season pass is worth it or not, but I'll just summarize it here. I think Bloodline was the best, and then the Assassin's Creed DLC, and then Mina. I think the season pass was overall a really good value and they definitely delivered when it comes to post-launch content. As well as that, they also added a mode which I honestly didn't even expect called Watch Dogs Legion of the Dead. And they've been adding a bunch of like holiday operators and themed skins every now and then, which is really cool. We've gotten word that there's gonna be a comic and a graphic novel which I didn't expect at all. I think the post-launch support for this game has been just about as good as it could have been, and they really did a good job. Now for multiplayer. Multiplayer, I actually haven't played that much. I've played it to the point where I know what's going on, but I, I don't just play it. I, I'm usually in the campaign or just playing single player, I'm currently doing a resistance mode playthrough, which is another thing, resistance mode, pretty cool. but. As far as multiplayer goes, there's been three seasons. We're on the third season, and the third season ends this week. So maybe there could be a fourth season or an update or something going on. We'll just have to wait and see. They also added Invasion, which in this game is probably my least favorite version of it. Say what you will, but I kind of like the feeling of just playing in your single player world and being invaded. The fact that you have to go into a whole different mode just to activate invasion kind of sucks. I, I don't really like that about the multiplayer just in general. I wish it was kind of all integrated into the main game and you just start up your game. You can choose whether or not, you always have to have the option of whether or not you want to be online, whether or not you want to be invaded, but just having it there would have been cool. They've also added tactical ops and extraction, which is my favorite multiplayer game mode so far. I actually had a lot of fun playing it and I still play it. There's a bunch of different events around the map as well. So the multiplayer definitely was not disappointing. The only thing is crossplay. There's supposed to be crossplay for this game and it's not here. It's been a year since the game released and that's frustrating. There are people who I'd love to play with on this game that I just can't because there's no crossplay. So here's hoping to that they will add it soon, maybe? And the last thing that I wanted to talk about was the possibility for a year two. I've heard rumors, I've heard people try and make theories. I'm not gonna get into any of that, but if there is a year two, it would be announced this week. Now I'm recording this video before the anniversary, so anything that happens today, I, I don't know what's happening. But if something does happen, you know I'll make a video about it. And if we don't get a year two of post-launch support, then I'm guessing that means that they're just going straight into Watch Dogs 4 development. Considering the first Watch Dogs was 2014, second 2016, third 2020, so two and then four years. So somewhere between 2023 and 2025 is when we'll most likely get a Watch Dogs 4 or a fourth game. And although my rating has not changed, my opinion on the game has, and it is up there with Watch Dogs 1 and Watch Dogs 2 now. I can play it and I can get good vibes. I can drive around the city and listen to music, which is something that I couldn't do at launch because it was just so laggy. It would honestly make me sick. And it wasn't just about the lag, it was more about the frame rate instability. So, you know, constant 40 FPS is fine, but when it's like 40 and then five and then 30 and then 64, it's just honestly induces motion sickness. And that's something that I wasn't a fan of, but now I can play it for long periods of time and actually enjoy myself. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the one year anniversary of Watch Dogs Legion. Has your opinion changed since it first launched? Do you think they should add anything else to the game? Let me know. And I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.